On today's episode of Watch Time, we'll be talking with Ryan Allen, owner of Zero Nine Holsters, and we'll be talking about how they were able to take their side hustle and turn it into the business that it is today with the power of marketing right after this. Welcome back to Watch Time, everybody. We're here with Ryan Allen from Zero Nine Holsters. Ryan, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, cool. Well, um, I'm looking forward to talking about your story. You guys, um, your company, I think it's really cool how you kind of got started and how you've been able to grow it. So I felt like there's a lot of marketing insight here from you as the, the business owner. So why don't you just um, tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, and Zero Nine Holsters? Sure. Um, I was in law enforcement for 27 years uh, as a police officer for much of that. And um, over the years, we kind of identified a need for better duty gear, mm -hmm. things that we were using at work day by day that we were either given without a case or given with cases that failed or were no good, not functional. So along the way, um, it's a much longer story into where it all started, but um, the the bottom line is we identified a need for some equipment and found a way to make a better version of the equipment, and that's where we're sitting today. Okay, yeah. So it's kind of like I think that's kind of an it's a neat story, and I think it's where you see a lot of successful companies, in my opinion, is um, finding a need for something and then creating a solution versus like, you know, like we were having that conversation earlier too, versus like some people just make product right. to just make product and throw it out there and see what happens. Yep. So um, I guess um, when you guys first started, was there a specific product that you, you saw this need originally for? Like, was there something that you were like, this is the product that we need to kind of start with? Yep. So uh, many, many years ago in my basement, we started out making gun holsters mm -hmm. and we realized pretty quickly that that was a flooded market and there wasn't a whole lot going on there that, um, that wasn't a big a need at that point. So along the way, uh, my business partner, Jeff, who was at the time a canine handler, mm -hmm. had a, an electronic collar remote that he needed to carry on his purse and that they kind of handed him and said, yeah, I guess you just put it in your pocket. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't very accessible and it certainly didn't protect it or, or keep it handy. So uh, we, we figured out a way to tool for a case that contained that thing and protected it and kept it on his vest. Mm. And that tooling at the time was fairly rare and it had to be custom made. And uh, it was kind of the launch pad for where the rest of this line of equipment that we make comes from. So um, the uh, electronic collar remote case was one of our first cases that we made followed by the portable radio case. I guess even going from there, and um, is there any other cases that in particular too, I know you guys, it's it's all duty gear, which I know is a wide range of of products, but is there anything specifically besides those two cases that you guys offer as well that you wanted to mention? Or, Well, yeah, at this point, we've been able to apply the techniques that we use for those first couple of cases to almost anything in law enforcement that guys need to carry. Mm -hmm. So body camera cases, handcuff cases, pistol mag cases, pepper spray cases, um, you, you pretty much you name it. If you can send it to us, we'll try our very best and most likely succeed to make a case for it for you, so you can carry it on duty. That's great, and I I think that's it's it's a much needed. I know we were talking about this earlier. It's a much needed market where people need to be able to have things that are a custom fit and easily accessible. And I mean, I, I know like there are some products out there that are not a custom fit. And then do you, do you see? I guess what's the the issue with not having something that fits one product specifically and is kind of like a universal thing. Typically, what we had was either a nylon or a leather bucket case, mm -hmm. and it was designed to fit 15 or 20 different radios or whatever you could fit into that case. And no one thing fit real well, mm -hmm. and uh, it was sloppy. It would, it would bounce around in the case, sometimes fall out of the case. Um, in the case of nylon, it would wear holes in the bottom and then eventually fall through the case. So the uh, the need presented itself, and and we we were able to to fill that need. And then along the way, in law enforcement specifically, mm -hmm. the the advent of outer carriers and and um, Molly vests mm -hmm. became a, a huge opportunity because now all these agencies are going to these vests 
specifically in order to help guys with back problems and and leg pain and things like that, Mm -hmm. that wearing a duty belt for many years just almost immediately causes. Mm -hmm. So with the advent of that uh, vest and getting everything up off of the belt and onto the chest, guys needed a, a way to carry all their gear on that vest. So um, that, you know, every time we, we identify a need in the space, we try to fill it and create a solution for it. I think what's, what's really cool. Um, just, you know, obviously working with you guys, um, with some different videos and stuff and learning more about your story. And I think what's, you, I think really great is, you know, how you're helping retain these items for people, because I think what a lot of people might not realize if, if they haven't been in law enforcement is there's nothing worse than getting to where you're trying to go and realizing you're missing your stuff. No doubt. Um, they call it the yard sale when you're chasing after somebody and, and your gear's in a pocket hanging out or mm-hmm. in a, a, a piece of gear that's no good. You're, you're running through a, a yard and all of your gear's in the front of it uh, laying on the ground. So, yep, the uh, the need to uh, protect a $5,000 portable radio mm-hmm. um, and not lose it, you know, th- there are things that are provided to law enforcement officers that are not provided with the ability to carry it. And that's mm-hmm. where we try to step in and, and create something to protect the officers, keep all their gear safe at hand so that they can use it when they need it. It's, it's great. It's And I love what you guys do. You, and you saw the need, you got stepped in and you're helping so many people. And I think what's really cool, and we, we'll probably get into this a little bit later, but I just love when I get to see on your social media channels when there's a success story and somebody talks about how you know your product has helped them retain their gear or help them in a situation where maybe they would have lost the radio. And I just think it's great that you guys are, are filling that gap. Absolutely. We're continued, continuously humbled by the, the, the support. Um, we were recently in Texas and, and many of the officers that came past our booth at this show mentioned that they had already bought most of our gear and, and appreciate our support in the industry and, and things like that. And it's it, everywhere we go, it's, it, we continue to be hum- humbled by the response. Let's, um, let's start from the beginning now. And I know we kind of talked a little bit about developing like what you guys are producing and why you're producing it. So, you know, let's look at, you already started your business. You know, you guys were starting off, you were saying like doing some stuff in your basement. So now you're trying to grow it. You have some other offerings. Um, and I guess I want to take this from a, to a marketing perspective. Sure. So um, what were your first steps you took in marketing your business once you decided to, you know, you were going to do this? Once we kind of made that pivot towards the duty gear and um, decided that was going to be the, the direction. Mm-hmm. At the time, um, I was not great with social media. I'm still not great with social media, to be honest. But social media was key initially mm-hmm. to getting the word out there. Um, I, I like to tell people that if you've got a good product, it, it will eventually sell itself. And that was what we experienced to a large degree. When we were just making gun holsters, you know, th- we were just doing it for ourselves and for the guys that we worked with at our own department. And mm-hmm. then we started getting phone calls from people in other states asking for uh, one of the holsters. And then the same thing happened once we switched to the, the duty gear. Um, it became word of mouth and word of mouth was huge for us in the beginning because Mm -hmm. we, you know, we were just two dumb cops. We didn't know what we were doing. So we put together a social media presence, so to Mm -hmm. speak, Facebook and Instagram mainly. And along the way I would boost a post here or there, Mm -hmm. and that would help grow the the reach a little bit more Mm -hmm. followers. Um, but you know, I can't stress enough that the the word of mouth was the way. Yeah, and that's that's what got us the the springboard to where we're at today for sure. And I think what a lot of people forget too, in my opinion, just like when we're working with clients and and that, um, or even new businesses, uh, you know, we work with sometimes startups at the chamber chambers of commerce and stuff like that. Um, I think they people forget about word of mouth or they forget about traditional marketing because everyone's so quick to jump on social media or they're so quick to like even if they even outside of social media, sometimes they want to jump into traditional marketing like mailers, but they don't think about the power of word of mouth, especially like products, growing products or services locally, and then being able to like use the the feedback and the support and the revenue to grow yourself to become more of a national product. And I think it's great that you guys, you know, were starting to use word of mouth and you were growing. I mean, even, and I, I think too, like with law enforcement, a lot of people in law enforcement meet people from other 
states regularly at conferences and things like that. So there Absolutely. is a nice word of mouth presence. Absolutely. That's, that's what we saw um, in our industry. Uh, police officers, like you said, they mm -hmm. go to conferences, they go to training, they, they bump into guys on the road, picking up people from other agencies, just, just walking around, driving around. Mm -hmm. So between social media, pushing that out and people seeing our gear on people in pictures and asking about it, um, just the ability to have our product on officers, persons as they're walking around, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's no small value of marketing in and of itself. So mm -hmm. when, when other officers see our stuff on somebody and ask, Hey, that's, that's neat. Where'd you get that? Mm -hmm. uh, I need one of those. Oh, I got it from zero nine. Yeah. So that was in the beginning, the largest mechanism for sure. And that's a trusted referral too. I feel like if somebody's using it regularly and they see them using it, it's <coughs> now you're hearing it from the end user saying like, yeah, I use this thing and it's great. Yep. That's uh even to this day, when a, a police agency reaches out and mm -hmm. says, we're trying to T&E some equipment because we want to put it on our people and we need the best case to go on this vest that we just got for all of our guys. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the first things I do is I look around in the in our order system for mm -hmm. agencies that are connected to them somehow and say, listen, we're going to send you some equipment to test and evaluate. Mm -hmm. But you also need to reach out to these three agencies because they're close to you. They're in the same area. Mm -hmm. They're going to sh share the same needs as you, and they're already running it. And yeah. so you'll be able to look at it on them. They've had it for two years now. You'll see how it holds up. You know, So that is huge for sure. So now that kind of brings me to um, still still talking about the beginning when you guys got started and just thinking about how you're looking at your ordering system and seeing who ordered. How how important was the website to you guys in the <coughs> beginning as well? Well, the, the website is, is very important for a number of reasons. One, you have to have a mechanism for people to order. Um, when we were just in the basement doing gun holsters, there was a lot of emails and texts and yeah, I'll mm -hmm. drop it off to you somewhere. Yeah. But if you're going to expand and scale, you have to have a website, especially for e-commerce, because that's where everybody, everybody goes to the web to, mm -hmm. to search for something, right? We've been very fortunate that um, search engine optimization has worked for us very well. Mm -hmm. And you know, some of that is based on a platform and some of that is based on some things that you can do on your own. But when you go to the web and search for a thing and our case for that thing pops up in the top five results mm -hmm. without you mentioning our name or that I wanted a case for it, mm -hmm. that's pretty powerful because yeah. now they know they want this thing and, oh, there's also this case for it. I, I probably need that too. So the website is very important. You know, you can't understate the ability to get your product to people. Well, and I think one thing I want to mention too on this, because I think just for everyone that's watching, um, you, and now you guys are brick and mortar in the sense that you have a facility where you're making things, but you guys don't really have a storefront. We do not. We, uh, at our facility, we also have the training range. So there are, are police officers in and out and, and I'm obviously pretty fortunate for that as well. Um, but no, we, we sell direct on the website and through a dealer network. So mm -hmm. we also have multiple dealers throughout the country. So and I think that's important too, like just because I think what's what's great about that is a lot of people will start off their business sometimes and they have a brick and mortar and they grow into like, they grow their product offering, they need more space to build it. And you guys were able to grow, which, you know, to where you are today without necessarily having a brick and mortar facility where you're, you know, hey, we're open Monday through Friday from nine to five, come in and pick up a product, you know, like some of these different like uniform stores and things like that. Correct. Yep. No, we, uh, we, we've never had a, our own brick and mortar store. So although people can come pick stuff up if they're local from us, mm -hmm. uh, everything that you can walk into a store, it'd be a uniform store, or one of our dealers. And correct me if I'm wrong and I'm making an assumption here, but um, would it be the, obviously the word of mouth, the website obviously is the big catalyst here where people can order. Those have been the things that have allowed you to be able to to maintain growth without having a storefront. True. Yep. Okay. Um, so let's, let's fast forward 10 years. So now we've kind of talked a little bit about, you know, how you guys kind of got started. We talked about, you, you know, boosting posts on social media, just kind of having that presence and then having the, uh, having the website and having a way to, for people to purchase from you. So fast forwarding 10 years and looking at 2018 through 2020, um, how was social media at that point a little like was it different for you at that point versus when you started? 
Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, at that point, we had grown our social media um, following to a, a, a pretty decent level, uh, at least for somebody who doesn't use social media personally. Um, and the website was doing well. We were noticing uh, huge hits from search engines and from other websites. And so, you know, getting getting our name out there and having other websites mention us is mm-hmm. is big for SEO. And so we, we started to see that uh, kind of organically grow. Um, we never once bought followers. We never once paid for anything more than a boosted post. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, to get to where it's at now was all organic and all kind of um, naturally happened. So at that point, we started trying to kind of uh, reach out a little bit more. We did a couple of paid YouTube ads that uh, are still going to this day. We've had pretty good success with that. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I think a lot of that has to do with the channel selection and where you're putting them, mm-hmm. the placement. Um, we, we get a lot of texts from friends and, and people across the country. Hey, I just saw you on this person's channel. You know, that that's cool. And it is cool. Um, mm-hmm. But we're still kind of in the infancy of a true print or uh, digital marketing campaign. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've done the videos with you guys, which have mm-hmm. been huge, and um, everybody loves those. And we were able to use those, whether in whole or in part, to you know add to social media, add to a website, add to you know they're, they're all on YouTube, and you can go look at, at them all there. Mm-hmm. Um, so, social media, the search engine optimization, and the word of mouth are were probably the three largest for us even mm-hmm. to this day. Um, I don't know that there's too much in the way of print marketing these days. Yeah, We do some catalogs at trade shows and things like that, and that gets to the end user and maybe to the agencies a little bit. But overall, I would say um, if you start with a good product and, and allow people to uh, get their hands on it, it, it starts to sell itself. No, I agree with that. And I think you guys, I mean, I, like talking about like we did in the beginning, I just think you guys are really filling that need, you know, a, a need in the market where, I mean, there's nobody else that's filling it. Nobody's helping answer those calls. So I feel like that's a huge advantage for you guys. And, you know, and really, I think in my opinion, just, just from talking with you and then also just, you know, working with you in the past, I feel like the social media end of things, it's really more just to generate that awareness to like let people know maybe that if they haven't come across somebody using your stuff yet or maybe, you know, just they haven't noticed that somebody in their department has your stuff. It's just allowing you guys to get that little bit of awareness to like get people to say, oh yeah, what is this product? Definitely. Um, You know, if if you can find the right combination of hashtags that people Mm -hmm. are searching and things like that in your industry, that's huge. You had mentioned it earlier, the ability to take somebody's feedback or input or support in Mm -hmm. terms of them wearing our stuff in a picture and then reposting it it gives a lot of credibility to the fact that, you know, somebody out there likes this stuff and it's working for them. Well, one thing I, I wanted to talk to you too, speaking of like the social media end of things, um, you know, you guys have over 10 K followers on both your Instagram and your Facebook. Um, just looking at it the other day. And, um, I asked a similar question to, uh, um, Tim when he was on the podcast and I was just curious to like get your feedback on this too. How long did it take for you guys to get to that 1000 followers? Uh, 1,000 followers probably took a year, year mm-hmm. and a half, mm-hmm. and uh, I believe we hit 10, 2019, 2020-ish, okay. somewhere in there. So it took a lot of years by just kind of letting it happen on its own. I, I, I will not profess to be a, an expert in social media marketing by any stretch. But to your point, though, and I, I think this is good for anybody that's that's watching or listening, I think a lot of it is, you know, it's it's patience. It's like you said, it's putting out a good product. It's continuously showing up and posting and sharing. It's continuously, you know, refining. You, you know, you re- I'm sure you've refined your website along the way. And like you said, you've noticed there's things with SEO that have kind of been helping you out. So it's the patience of waiting to finally get there. Because I feel like a lot of people, they, they start off, it doesn't happen in a month, and they go, okay, it doesn't work. Yeah, you, you definitely have to be patient. You have to keep grinding it out and, and making it happen on your own because um, th- there's no magic bullet to any of it, I don't think, in my opinion. You, you have to put the work in and you have to be patient enough to sit back and, and make sure that it, it, it does happen. 
Oh, that's great advice. And I think that's I think that's been the key. We've talked to a lot of people about social media marketing um, the last few podcasts, and that's just kind of been the key. It's that patience and that's that consistency, you know, and just, you know, it's going to happen, but you just, it's not going to happen overnight. Right. One thing I kind of wanted to touch on a little bit and, and, um, and I'm just curious about this. So, you know, a lot of people, like you have said, like some people were saying like, Hey, you know, um, I just saw your product. Someone reviewed it. You know, maybe someone was talking about it. Um, when you, when, I don't know if you've done this recently or if you have any feedback on this, but like if you were to Google zero nine holsters, or even if you were to Google, um, like police duty gear, um, I'm not sure if you've seen, but like, are there results that are popping up in Google that are from YouTube that are probably referenced to people trying out your gear? Yes. There are. Um, I haven't done a, a real deep dive to try to sift through all of it. I know that it's out there. I know that there are people who do the unboxing videos here and mm -hmm. there, and there are people out there who do reviews of the gear. Uh, one of them many years ago was uh, specifically referenced our triple mag pouch in, in comparison to another brand's triple mag mm -hmm. pouch and and the, the benefits of ours over theirs and things like that. So it's definitely out there. And... Um, some of them have more comments and, and views mm -hmm. than others, obviously, based on their own reach. But um, overall, I would say that every little bit helps. I mean, even if it's somebody who says, oh, I like it, but, you know, there's this this one little thing I don't like. You know, people can make an informed decision at that point and, and they'll understand what's out there. So all that type of stuff helps for sure. No, that's great. That's great. And that's why I was curious because I know like a lot of people sometimes don't think about the power of of YouTube in Google search. And I feel like when you were talking about how you know, um, you guys are seeing these SEO results. I figured like this stuff had to be popping up um, in some way, shape or form. And what's great about you guys, even on the people giving their opinion one way or the other, you know, I feel like you guys are a company where you can see that. And then if there is something that you can correct with it, then I feel like you guys do. Absolutely. Um, we pride ourselves on being able to bring products to market rapidly. Mm -hmm. Because one, you know, when a, a radio company brings out a new radio or a new set of handcuffs come out, uh, you know, if there's no case for that, you know, these guys get issued it or they have to buy it and, and then they got nowhere to put it. So um, every little bit helps with product design mm -hmm. and um, all of it factors in even on tweaks down the road. You're 100 percent correct. So going back to social media, and I was just curious, and if you could talk to this a little bit, I know you've boosted some posts and you've put some stuff out there. Um, are there any posts in particular that you've seen that you guys have done where you're like, this worked really well? Um, you know, is it like like carousels, like multiple pictures, videos, um, infographics, things like that? Is there anything in particular you've noticed? Um, we, I've always heard that video content is the biggest and, and, and our videos do well for sure. Um, oddly enough, just off the top of my head, the uh, the carousel style of mm -hmm. customer submitted pictures. Um, if I had to put a finger on one thing over the years, when I post, you know, six or ten pictures of what people have sent us in the last couple of weeks, yeah. those always get the most likes. Do you tag like? Do you tag the people that you got the photos from? I don't. <clears throat> uh, in the industry, sometimes folks don't want to be associated. Mm -hmm. They don't want their face out there. They don't want their name out there. Mm -hmm. So I try to respect that. If somebody specifically says, hey, could you tag me in it? I'll tag them in it. Okay. But um, in general, if you send me a picture, I'm going to try to sanitize it. And then I'm going to just show off the fact that, you know, somebody sent in this picture. That's, I think that's great. It's interesting that you're, the results you're seeing with that, because I feel like when you tag people, like it definitely like it's that it notifies them. So they like it. And it, sometimes they can like push it to their following. But I think it's cool that you guys are getting that reach from those and you're not even tagging people. So it really shows that power. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the, the, the general feed post is typically not tagged unless somebody asked me for it or mm -hmm. I'm reposting somebody else's. And then of course it mentions them. And so in the stories, a lot of times if, you, if we're tagged in a story and I repost it, it, it shows where it came from. Mm -hmm. um, but just taking somebody's picture from a direct message and cutting it, cropping it, sanitizing it and putting it up, mm -hmm. um, you know, unless they ask for it, I, I actually try not to tag them. So now I guess taking it a step further from, so that's like kind of reaching more of your following. Have you seen any posts? Maybe it's the same. I don't know. But like, have you seen anything where you feel like when you post something specific, you tend to get more followers? I can't say that I can track back to specific mm -hmm. followers. Um, 
I know that when we've boosted posts, mm-hmm. we tend to get more followers out of that. Okay. And I, I, I assume that there's a metric somewhere that says, we're going to show this to people who don't follow you yeah. because you're paying us. Um, so, you know, we, we get more followers in that instance than we do when it's just a, a regular post on our feed for sure. Okay. No, that makes sense. And it, that's obviously, it's a whole name of the game when you're trying to boost or run an ad is you want to get more people that have not seen you. Right. Um, so, and, and I guess one thing to kind of clear up too, like there is the option that if, if anyone's listening and you're a small business owner and you're thinking about boosting, you can also boost or create an ad where you can retarget to your following. So if you're trying to reach people, maybe you're running a promotion, you want people that are already following you to uh, take advantage of that promotion. You can also boost to that as well. So just keep that in mind. Um, so I, I like in this podcast, we like tie everything back to video in some way, just because it's kind of the roots of the podcast is video marketing. Yep. Um, obviously, I know we've done some video with you, as you, as you have mentioned. Um, so one thing I want, and I also know you guys have posted some stuff, whether it be um, stories that you guys have captured video yourself or things going on at the shop or whatnot. Um what types of videos have you found to be most successful versus like reels versus stories versus, you know, things like that? Um, I think it, it, it has tended to be kind of fluid to us. One day we get a whole lot of likes on a a static picture post. Mm -hmm. And one day we get a a ton of views and a ton of likes on just a a video clip Mm -hmm. right now, you know, conventional wisdom is the reels. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've tried to get a little bit better at that. It's not my forte, but, um, we definitely get a lot of play off of video Mm -hmm. and, you know, knowing that if if you're a content creator and you can, and put yourself in a position to be able to do that well, Mm -hmm. you'll be very successful. Yeah, I agree with that a hundred percent. I think, I think that, but I also, and I think that like, what's great about it is, um, I don't think people realize how simple sometimes it can be. And like, like you're saying, like you, like even the reels that you've been doing, like, like I know that you guys are probably, you know, you're doing that DIY, I assume. Um, so are you doing that with your phone? Do you guys have like a GoPro? Do you have something at the the shop? Like 99.9% mm-hmm. of this is on my phone mm-hmm. and it is DIY, which is, you know, the, for better or worse, it's, it's been working as well as it has, you know, it, I, I guarantee that if I got better at it, the the, the reach would be better too. Um, you can't understate the uh, importance of having somebody who knows what they're doing, though, help you out too. I mean, when we reach out to you guys for video, um, you know, there's that's clearly something that I'm not going to be able to handle on my phone and to have that available for trade show booths and for the YouTube channel and to be able to send that to YouTube channels for advertisements and Mm -hmm. things like that. Um, You know, there's a time and a place for the DIY, hey, make a reel out of what you're doing that day Mm -hmm. because people like that. It's authenticity, right? Yeah. But at the same time, if you're going to scale a a business, you're going to need some professionally created content. Well, I think you guys have a nice balance too, like just from following you and watching, like obviously, obviously we did the the, the videos we've done for you. Like I I like what we've been able to put together with your guys' direction, but I also like... um, the DIY things that you guys are doing, because I think it is nice to see that insight into what's going on in the shop, what's coming out, you know, things like that. Um, to, I mean, to your point, like, yeah, it, as you guys do more of that stuff, I'm sure you'll see more and more engagement, but it's a nice balance because, you know, showing off what you're doing at the shop or when you guys are at a show or something like that, like that needs to come across to your point as authentic and it's us doing our thing and you guys are coming along for the ride. And I feel like that's what people really enjoy. Yeah, for sure. We, we, uh, we're very proud of the fact that we came from law enforcement and uh, were able to fill needs for both ourselves and all of our colleagues across the world. And the the authenticity is key. For cops, by cops is is kind of the mantra. And to to show people the inner workings, you know, there's there's a, a definitely a, a subset of people who are interested in seeing what's going on. And if that means that they're engaged and they are interested, mm-hmm. then that's a win. No, I agree. I think I think that you guys, and, and that's the thing, I just think a lot of businesses need to realize that you got to show a little bit of what's going on behind the scenes. You got to show a little bit of your day to day and you have to show, you know, like in the professionally produced areas, like, you know, like you have to have some stuff that helps your brand as well. And in that, depending on the situation. So, um, 
what's interesting about this whole conversation with you, and I think what the people like that are listening and watching um, may not realize is like kind of like what we've been talking about, or maybe they do realize, um, you know, you guys were able to grow this out of out of your basement, and I think a lot of great companies have that origin story. When you think about like Apple coming out of a garage and Microsoft coming out of a garage, and you have these companies that start somewhere like that and they grow. And you guys have done that with a variety of strategies, you know, outside of, you know, creating good product, word of mouth, social media, websites. Um, but can you give some insight, um, if you were to take three tips from your experience of growing Zero Nine Holsters from a marketing perspective for our listeners, what what would be three things you'd, you would share for somebody who's just getting started? I, I continue to lean on the, the start has to be to have a good product mm-hmm. and grow it organically, naturally. I think people understand when you're buying followers, you know, if somebody's got 100,000 followers, but each p- p- picture they post gets 120 likes, you know, there's a disconnect there and, and people can kind of see it and it's disingenuous. So I would say my tip is to, to start with in a good place and and work hard and, and grow it naturally. Mm-hmm. Use the tools available, clearly, social media, a website, things like that, video content. Um, and just you, you can't stop working. I mean, whether it's at marketing or at, you know, learning HR, learning. Mm-hmm. If you're starting in a basement, you have to figure this stuff out or you have to, be, you know, somehow make enough money to pay somebody to do it for you. So just keep working hard at learning just research, you know, ask people, reach out to people like yourself that have some knowledge and and maybe find a mentor in the industry that you're in. I think those are all all great pieces of advice. Um, that's that's great. Like there's a lot of great thing, takeaways there. So I hope everyone that's listening or watching, pause it, rewind, write some of those things down because I think they're all they're all important um, for people that are growing businesses. So where can you know where can people learn more about zero nine holsters anyone that's that's um, watching or listening if they want to learn more about you and your company where can they go the website is zero nine holsters.com mm-hmm. uh, we're at zero nine holsters on uh, all social media Twitter Facebook Instagram those are the the primary channels and certainly feel free to reach out to us if you have questions great Well, thanks for coming on with me today, Ryan. I appreciate it. I appreciate your insight and your story. I appreciate you having me. Thanks for listening to Watch Time. We hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. And remember to like and subscribe so you don't miss future episodes. And if you want your question answered on our podcast, go to flexmediacle.com backslash watch time.